Hello and welcome back to another very exciting tutorial about grooming hair in Cinema 4D. And now let's groom hair, the one that my character Kevin is having right now. So to do this, we're going to open up Cinema 4D. So this is how Kevin looks with our hair on it. Make sure to get the free project file so we can do this together. This is part 3 from tutorial series and you can check the rest in the description below. So once you open up the project, you're going to see Kevin's head, which is already animated and he's doing some crazy things. Um, let's stop this right here and let's simply select the polygons. I have already included a stored selection here, so you don't have to do anything. Open up the new object and then double click this triangle thing, which is basically polygon data and it's instantly going to light up. Shift C, let's type add hair and let's choose add hair. And there it is. We have a hair. It's going to be super huge. If we're going to zoom out, we can see that. Um, the reason why we're doing again, I want us to explore many different circumstances. What if this object is very small and we still need to style him? Let's set the length to one because he's super tiny. Root to polygon area and then editing and reroot and regrow. We can also press play. It's going to look really bad, but don't worry, we'll get through this. Okay, first step is basically done. This is the part where we're going to move to Groom tab. And for this one, let's use the middle mouse click a lot here to kind of monitor what we're doing. Also, if we will click Shift V, we can go to Save Frames and decrease the opacity. I'm going to come to the right view and I'm going to take the first available tool here and let's simply brush our hair up. But as you can see, it's not really smooth and also it has its kind of weird corners. So I'm going to go Control Z and let's increase the segments for our guides. Let's set it to 32. And now if we're going to do the same, it's going to be way smoother. And I'm going to pull this hair all the way to the front. Try to control the radius of your brush tool by holding down Shift and Middle Mouse Click. So I know this must be very challenging, but this is what we have to do, unfortunately. So while we're doing this, try to have like less artifacts, meaning like this kind of stuff. Try to keep it as clean as it's possible. Now, like this is very tricky. It depends from where you look at it. Uh, it's going to highlight the amount that it's going to control, but it's not really reliable. So I recommend to sort of correct it from the other views and not from the perspective view, because it's going to lie to you <laughs> at some point. So, yeah, but I think in this case, this is pretty much it. I don't want us to go super crazy on this. So make sure you get your desired result. And you can also apply your hair on the other areas of the sphere head. When you select this function, it's not going to allow you anything. We're going to come over here to the comp settings. When we will activate it, it's going to come up to our attributes tab instantly. Let's leave the settings the way they are. I want you to look at your character from front and click apply. It's kind of twisted the hair. So let's go control Z and look at him from this kind of weird angle. This is the most unique hair tool that I have ever seen, to be honest. So make sure you're aware of this tool and you can apply new transform from each new location you move in and it's going to update it instantly. This is really, really amazing tool. And I'm just going to go back to where I was before. And let's move on to the clump. So the clump sort of expands the hair and gives him some kind of randomness to it and you can control this curve here so to control the where the clump is positioned i mean this is the best way of doing it but in this case i'm not going to use it and let's move on to the curl which is pretty simple again we're not going to use this one either but we're going to use the cut tool and let's cut our hair from the right view Slightly, just a little bit. We can check the 
other views in case we want to cut somewhere else, but I think it's okay. So the push tool is if you're going to click apply, but on a one centimeter, it's going to behave similar way as the other effects are doing. It's pretty slow setting and computer takes pretty much time to calculate it. So you don't really have to use it. I just wanted to show it to you. The strengthen tool sort of allows you to go back from where you started and you can just click and drag. With the add guides tool, you can add hair really quickly. Hair mirror tool is a bit advanced and you can skip this one for now and we can stick to everything else. Let's switch to dynamics tab and let's go to properties and rest mix should be 100%. And this way, it, the hair is going to stay still. That's pretty much it about grooming hair. Let's fire up Redshift. Let's select the hair material. And the first thing that we want to adjust is the root, which is going to be 0.01. And the tip is going to be 0.001. We also want to increase the segments for the hair tab. And now we're going to enable the wave and also the clump. So let's go here one more zero and maybe let's add one more zero here. Yeah, that's more like it. 0 0.001 and 0 0.0001. Well, since our object is super small, that's why we need to go in such a smaller value. So this looks pretty awesome to me. Let's move on to the color tab, go to texture, gradient, and let's go to the gradient. Choose the type of 2D for corners. I'm going to add one more color knot somewhere in the middle. And let's start from the first one. And let's choose the green color. Other color, which is going to be quite lighter. And then let's go with the, the darker one. Let's play with those sliders a little. If you have seen previous tutorials, basically you should know what everything else is doing. So make sure to check those out. And meanwhile, feel free to experiment with those crazy settings uh, like curl, bend, freeze and many more. We can get really crazy looking and realistic hair. Let's take a look at this example. Basically, this is just low poly hand. If, if we will press ND, it's going to show us the polygons. Let's adjust the size of it. Let's move on to the groom tab. And we're going to do pretty much the same. But since we have so much hair, the method that we used previously, it's going to help us, but it's not really going to do a lot. And what I'm doing here is I'm slowly starting to sort of give the hair direction. And from the front view, I'm going to work on my front hair. And before we do that, also I forgot to increase the segments for our guides. This can go to like 32. And let's do the same for the other side. And don't forget to sort of maybe help sometimes from the perspective view but make sure to adjust this view accordingly before you proceed as you can see from my front view i'm trying to divide this hair by just using brush tool i'm not holding any keys i'm also going to elevate this slightly to get that depthy look yeah and we can slowly start adjusting the back side of our hair yeah, I feel like we have a lot of hair here. Let's use the cut tool. Hold down shift to increase the size. And let's go somewhere like this, maybe. We can also maximize this and give cuts around the ear. We can easily add some of the guides over here. We need to cut them and brush them. Obviously, this is super a lot. But something like this probably will work. Let's don't do the same mistake here. And I'm going to just groom this in a sort of right way. I'm just going to elevate hair here slightly. And then go down, elevate, go down. It's very challenging to groom hair in Cinema 4D, like this manually. For example, if I go here and I just going to drag this down, I'm going to make it very bad and I'm not going to be able to fix this. 
So make sure to be really accurate while doing this. Okay, let's give him a nice cut here. So one thing I want you to pay attention is that, as you can see, I'm trying to delete this guide, but it's not going away. I can still see it. And I cannot get rid of this. The way to get rid of this is to go to points mode and then choose the selection tool. Now we're going to quickly select those artifacts that we are seeing. Yeah. And now let's press delete and they are gone. I'm not going to clean this up completely. This is purely for educational purposes. And now we're going to fire up Redshift. Let me adjust the output settings. And here is what we have. We can create camera and we're good to go. First, let's adjust the thickness of our hair. Maybe let's go 0 0.01 and 0 0.01 and 0 0.01 here, maybe 0 0.5. So as you can see, only our guides are being rendered. To fix this, we just need to move to Guides tab and the roots are being selected automatically since we added some our own guides into our hair system. Now let's just switch it back to polygon area. We should not click regrow or reroute because it's going to reset our hair. Now let's go to the hairs tab and maybe change segments to 32 and decrease the amount to 20,000. Also make sure to check this as normal because it's going to give the hair more natural direction. Go to length and we can give length like 50%. Let me add some basic material to my moto right here. I can add also some subdivision to it. Let's go back to our hair material. I'm going to enable a wave and twist maybe, maybe curl a little bit. Oh, as you can see, our sides disappeared. To fix this, I'm just going to go back to my length, maybe decrease the variation to 25 and increase the length to 40. Okay, 75. Some clump. And let's go to specular and set strength to 30%. And also, we can go here, 0 0.3 maybe. And let's increase the amount of hair. Remember, this is constant adjustments of many settings at the same time. And yeah, let me adjust my length even more. Let's decrease the amount of curl to 12, maybe 42. Yeah, 42 is looking pretty nice. And let's go to hair color and make it slightly darker. And let's push this to the right. Let me set the lights real quick. If you want to learn more about those settings, make sure to watch other parts of the tutorial. And that's a wrap on today's tutorial. If you enjoyed this tutorial and want to see more, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. You can also follow me on Instagram and become a Patreon for more advanced tutorials. Once again, thank you for watching. This is Sandro and I'll see you next time.